and we are live welcome everyone to blender today um i have written the number uh, some somewhere i think it's like 33 or 34 already it's been like the whole year basically and uh looking forward to see what we get at the end of the year it's, it's awesome to be able to to like keep track of all the, the development that is going on by the way please uh thumbs up to, hey, all right thank you thank you for the thumbs up everything is is good with the audio if you're new here we get together every week as much as we can to see what's new in blender what, what happens in blender today and actually today is a fantastic day to talk about this kind of stuff because at the blender animation studio there were two three new developers jo showing up um two of them are gonna work there uh permanently so that is pretty uh thank you everyone for the for the thumbs up jordan original adrian philippe everyone um so yeah, then, um, it's pretty exciting because one of them is the man himself, Jacques Luc. Animation nodes or everything nodes. He's going to be working. He, he moved to Amsterdam, like for reals. Like, that's insane. Like we now we have permanently working at the Blender Animation Studio. We have uh, uh, well, Sergey was there for many years. Brecht full time cycles that everything interface every every pretty much everything and um now we get uh shaq's look full-time developer too so it's pretty pretty awesome what's gonna happen in there the other developer that show up today is benoit Polse, the developer that will work on the other big topic that is it's uh it's a bit um Audio out of sync. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll I'll try my best to fix it, but and it's just so exciting. But when I will say was uh, showed up here this today at the Blender Animation Studio. So he's been working on um, well, the way he was working for years on the game engine, the now late game engine. Um, but if you've been following the news regarding the the, the what is going to be like a replacement, not a replacement, but a, a different perspective to what the, this, this interactive mode is going to be in Blender. So when the game engine was removed, um, there was like a loss of like all kinds of um, like, inter like, yeah, making, making games basically. So what is better than making games is being able to interact with everything in Blender and not only interaction for like games, but also like a, a walkthrough. It's like a game, but it's it's it, it's something simpler than that. What about physics? It's interactive, right? You wanna you wanna interact your your objects, your meshes with uh, cloth, with uh, with anything basically. So it it's actually a very I think it's a good good approach. And from what from the work that he's going to do, it should be possible to make to build logic to export it to other engines maybe or for like just being compatible with the rest of, of blender so it's i think it's a it's a good approach that the way it's going and especially when we mix it with everything nodes everything nodes is this concept that every part of blender should be should should be node based what what is it node based well you know animation nodes the um, the add-on that's make for like motion graphics all kinds of animations well but what if that concept was applied to everything in blender so the animation nodes developer Jacques Luke joined as i mentioned uh, to as of today permanently at the blender animation studio as permanent as it gets but uh it's uh very exciting to, to have it here because the animation nodes proved to be amazing is huge it's like to how much 200 nodes or something to make things like crazy and it's done in python so it could be way better if it was integrated fully in blender like in, in c so he's going to work on in the concept of everything nodes but it's going to be built in blender it's not going to be an add-on it's going to be like part of blender like essential part of blender and in order to get familiar because the animation nodes add-on is in python in order to get familiar with actual c code in in like actual the hardcore stuff is going to work on wrapping up 2.8. It's going to help up uh, help out the developers in wrapping up 2.8. So it's even better news because it means that uh, he's going to get familiar with many areas of Blender by improving 2.8 and by making sure that we meet the beta release, which is still target. Yes, still target to 
what is it? One month, uh, six weeks from now by, by, by the Blender conference next month. So yeah, around six weeks, we should have a beta, hopefully. And uh, having an extra developer, it really helps. The other developer, because I said there was three of developers. So there is um, Shaq's Look animation nodes. Then uh, Ben Mavels uh, was uh, showed up today. He lives in Belgium, but he came, he's very close. He's in, we're in Amsterdam, so it's very close. And he will start working as of today on the new interactive mode. So that we'll hope to get news on that soonish. So, you know, it will take time, but yeah, it will, um, um, it will get some news on that. The other developer is uh, on the Blender cloud. So why is it relevant for Blender? Well, because the Blender cloud is partially what makes this happen. Like the development fund is one way of funding Blender, but joining the Blender cloud is another way of keeping the Blender animation studio alive, right? With the developers and the artists working and testing Blender. So, and, and also because developing the Blender cloud, which is open source, making it work more tightly with Blender itself. So you could, uh, manage your renders from within Blender, send it to the cloud or like um, managing, if you're making a film, you can have Attract, which is this shot management, uh, production management software that is also open source and is released by the Blender Studio. Um, like making that interaction a bit more tight, it's, uh, it's good for everyone. So yes, super, super exciting times. So it's Monday, it's uh, 10 past nine. Remember that we are live. It's uh, 10 past nine here in Amsterdam uh, and Europe Central, European Central time. You hear that the European Union wants to get rid of uh, uh, times uh, daylight saving for next year. That would be pretty exciting. I hope it doesn't make things a bit more messy than they are right now. So if um, everything is correct, you should start asking your questions at Blender today and I will read them here. There hasn't been, like, there are news things, but there are things going on. Of course, there's always things going on, but there hasn't been, like, crazy amount of them. So I will spend more time on reading the questions because I always end up reading, like, only, um, only a few of the questions that we have. So I will try to reply more. So let's go through the news so far, like, super fast. Let's, uh, cheers once again and I will go through the news. New developers, yeah, this is what I just mentioned. So Jacques Luke, as we know, I already talked about it. He's going to um, get familiar with the C code by helping with Finish 2.8. And the other developer, the cloud developer is called Tobias Johansson, and he will join the cloud family. So that will be pretty awesome as well. I've been working myself on the Blender cloud like the whole weekend and today and tomorrow is gonna go live. I think I mentioned last week that it will be live soonish, but it was gonna happen last week. Things happened and uh, it's gonna happen for reals without any more delays tomorrow, Tuesday. So it should happen. So if you are in the future, hello future, <laughs> it's uh, it should be out. I have it, a copy here, of course, because I developed, uh, I, I installed it on my laptop. So this is a new cloud. I, I don't want to give you too many, um, like a spoiler, but basically it's, it's the same content, but we're trying to organize it a bit better and like to have even some cool features so you can have production lessons to, I'm going to make a video tomorrow in the Blender cloud channel. If you're, um, uh, if you're not subscribed, you should check it out, but there are some really cool things. Like you can see the progress as you watch the video, or if you even have watched it at all. So, that way you can, yeah. The the browsing is a bit is a bit better. Also, it's uh, it, it should be in, in general a bit more uh, should be better for browsing stuff. And you also get like similar assets. This feature maybe doesn't make it tomorrow to the release, but we're working on on it. So hopefully the experience will be better for everyone. Next, I don't want to spoil you all the the, the 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 new fun stuff that is happening here, but. Let's continue. 2.8 beta works towards the beta. Back fixes improvements. So some of the improvements are actually they are small, but they are huge at the same time. For example, as of a few days ago, when you had a plane or a planar surface, and you will see it from the side, from like the orthogonal ortho view from the from the side, you couldn't see the 
mesh you couldn't see it really but now you can if you have outline selected of course if you have wireframe selected then you will see the um the the mesh from there and i can't select it or can i no i can't select it from the side maybe that's another i need to report that back but basically yes you can and now you can see it that it, it sounds silly but it wasn't there because of the refactor of the wireframes and stuff so that um, that's one of the little things but also uh, tools and many tools have been improved there has been improvements on the poly build and um, the friend Noel Noel Belic he worked he, he he made a video I'm gonna check on, on his Twitter account oh by the way this is this is the the the, the man himself great picture even this is the blender animation studio down here in the back and that is Jack's look so wow already 177 it was posted like wow I'm gonna like this ah uh, so cool look at that people going nuts yay he deserves it such a legend all right um okay not getting sidetracked here but I wanted to show this this tweet actually that it's showing the new poly build um feature which basically it's really good for like doing retopple. So this is the poly build feature ins inside of Blender. It's completely built in, no no add-ons, and it has even pre-selection, like pre-selection highlighting, which is something that is a bit of a taboo in Blender because it's not implemented and because it's there has been uh, um, requests for implementing it and it was never really like a like a feature that was considered to be added even. Pre-selection can be handy in a way, but it can also be very distracting because it, it can't be perfect, right? Like if if like if you have too many vertices, it, it can be super perfect all the time. So there is room for error. So yeah, it's uh, maybe it could, could it's a feature, maybe it could be optional. Um, but for uh, the time being, at least it's available on this fit on this um, on this tool. So. It's a pretty interesting for like Ritopo. It's fantastic. So that is the um, polybuild feature demoed by Nawal Velic. The smooth and the randomized um, setting also they have been improved. There is not like huge amount of uh, huge difference from what it was. But for example, if you select the Let's make it bigger here. Let's increase the, the, the size of the UI altogether. And there. So if I um, set the smooth, it's just the same. You click and it crashes. Yes, I managed to crash Blender. It's been a while. All right, let's do another one. Let's do tra randomize. Now I click and then I drag and I control basically the amount of of uh, randomness so you click and drag this is working pretty well when you have right click select not the website but the tool right click selection it works pretty well but there has to be uh, there is work to be done a lot of work to be done to get the left click selection working properly because i don't know if you tried it but it's very um it's not very it works, it's not working very well at the moment um, for example because of the context uh, the concept of an active tool so if you select with left click then you really can't set the mouse cursor unless you uh, go to the cursor tool which maybe some people like it but then still you let you activate it with right click and then when you select the tool then you activate it with a right click as well. So it's kind of weird because you would expect an active tool to be activated on left click, right? Like an action. So there has there is work to be done actually there and it will be done. It's part of a roadmap. There is a task in uh, in the developer.blender.org that it's, it's more for like yeah, developers in general, but it's already got a lot of attention and it's only a few days old. So basically, the yeah, it highlights all the issues and what could be done. So this is to be targeted. The idea is that Blender 2.8 will make it easier 
for uh, new users to change to left click select. Blender will remain right click select. It's uh, it's still it's still super superior if you know the the advantages, but it's not common. Like if you come from another software, if you're just starting, then it's completely alien, right? So there will be a uh, one time setup. Like the idea is that you the first time you open Blender, you that you can go through like a, some sort of wizard and say, okay, left click, right click. Do you have a pen? All right, what which buttons do you want to press or that kind of stuff. That will be done. That will be implemented um, eventually, but that's the idea. So there is a um, speaking of startups, like what what happens when you start. There is a there are a few um, concepts going on around, like what the, the things that you input device, left click, right click. That that's what I was mentioning. These are all concept art basically, but. Um, it could be a way to get started in a more easy way. For the time being, I've seen it. It's not committed yet. Um, it's not anywhere. Yeah, it's not anywhere. But it, I've seen it working. It's just awesome. It's a feature that um, Brecht is working on that it's for application templates. So, you know, this, this feature has been around for ages. It's even part of the Blender Pro blenderpro.com i think or something like that there there, there is, someone made a um application template it's a feature from blender 2.7 even that allows you to change um pretty much everything in blender like the the interface or with with code right you have to buy you have to type it but allows you to have like a specific startup the blend so you can have it your own um um, objects when you start a new scene or new th its its own theme this is basically a whole new blender with application templates so with this in mind we are working on in implementing application templates built in blender like blender will ship with a few so what would be good uses of of these application templates one of them is the 2d animation so if you're a 2D anime or like a 2D artist and you open Blender for the first time and you see all of this stuff like sculpting, shading, texture, UV editing, maybe you don't really need all of that. So uh, the application template, when you, when you start a new file with like maybe control N, you know, or, or like from the temp, from the splash screen, when you start, you could select here, what do you want to do? So when you select one, it will open this animation, this application template. So for 2D animation, it will have the 2D animation um, workspace and maybe rendering workspace and maybe animation, but just that. So you have a bit more, like you, you feel a bit more familiar. This will be uh, led to the people to design, to the community, or also the members of the Grease Pencil team because they've been working on it for a while. So that will be pretty interesting. There is already another one that is planned for like VFX that has like it doesn't have things like UV editing or like video editing but right? because it's meant for video effects. So but it has other stuff like um, rotoscopy or it has a masking um, workspace and yeah it will be a bit more dedicated. I th so I, th I think it's a great idea because the animation, the 2D animation uh, workspace will have a 2D object, like a grease pencil object when you should start. So you see it properly um, as opposed to the 3D ones. So it will be, uh, it, I, you have to see it to, 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 to see it, to believe it. And I'm here, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm still browsing the new, the new cloud. Um, I will close it for now, so no spoilers. And let's continue with the news and then I will move to the questions. The, um, yeah, the viewport that I already mentioned and then just reports. The library's upgrades are finished on Linux, still failing on some distributions due to OpenEXR. So this is one of the reasons why I, I waited for making the, um, the video about compiling Blender, about building your own 3D software. I think I have it on my t-shirt here. <clears throat> yes, 
building your own 3D software. So I will I was waiting for that just to to have the otherwise it will get updated super fast. So now that the, all the libraries update, I'm gonna make one. And I think I'm done for today. I already I've been talking for like 25 minutes without showing much. So let's let's continue the topic by answering some questions. So let's go all the way up. All the way until like as, as much as I can. Gee. Well, okay. I will I will go the way up. It's uh, we have time today. It's hello from Kenya, from Mars. Mars. Bars? <laughs> Gary said, hello. Hey, looking forward to the Blender latest new. Yeah, me too. And um That's so nice. Just in the crash report, yes. Since Stone doesn't tweet about meeting notes anymore, would you pick it up, please? Blender Dev or Blender Today, Twitter's no matters. Uh, about the meeting notes, yeah, I mean, the meeting notes are on Monday, and today was like at six, like three hours ago. It's just a matter of waiting three more hours, and then you see it here. But yeah, the the, the Blender Dev should do it. But the thing is that sometimes it happens at this time, and I'm already busy enough with other things like setting up Blender today. But it should be, it should be automatic, come on. It's always the same topic, we could make a bot. Does anybody know how to make a, a Twitter bot? Uh, let me know and then we can hook it up with the Blender Dev account. Basically we'll just check for this, Mondays are 10 at 10 or at uh, 6, maybe at 11 or at 7 p.m. And then just look for this topic from this and then paste it, maybe. Two questions. David asks, why there is a tab in many windows? Can we get node-based modifier and when? <laughs> okay, why there is a tab in many windows? I don't understand the question. Sorry, if you could rephrase it, like a tab in many windows. This is tabs. And then you can make a new main window that also has tabs. Maybe that's what you mean. If you don't want the tabs, you can just make a regular window with the with the menu window, make new window. And this one doesn't have any tabs. And you can have as many as, like you can have a full editor right here. So maybe that's what you mean. I'm not sure I'm following. Can we get node-based modifier? Well, that is a part of everything nodes, right? Everything is everything. It means everything. So it will eventually come. And maybe one idea will be because the code quest for this year was huge, was basically the Blender 2.8 code quest, which is insane, like way too many topics for just a few months of developers working. So what if there was a code quest, but only for everything notes? Still a huge project, but it's more, or maybe there could be two code quests, one to finish the interactive mode and one to finish the everything notes, maybe. I don't know, something along those lines. Maybe it's better to fund those. Would you fund another code quest if it was so big? Or would you even fund two code quests? Or even better, prefer to fund individual code quests? Let me know in the comments. Like uh, maybe somebody likes everything notes but doesn't really care about interactive mode, maybe. Who knows? So that says, any news about everything notes? Yes, it starts. As soon as, well, the, you can read it here, basically. The developer is here in Amsterdam, but before working on everything, now it's gonna get familiar because the animation nodes is done in Python, which is a completely different language than Blender's own C and C++. So in order to um, get familiar with the code, Jack's gonna help with finishing and wrapping up Blender 2.8, which is amazing news because there, the more hands we can put in Blender 2.8, the, the sooner that will be ready, and the more stable that it will come as fast as faster than than before. Francesco says, "Hi, Paolo. This is the first live I watched during school, school year. Okay, school year. Um, ah, yeah, because you guys started. Some people started school right now in in the southern hemisphere where I'm from. I'm from Argentina. It's uh, it's the other way around. We start in March." and ends in December. Um, I don't know how it's in Australia, because it's also Southern Hemisphere. Let me know if you're Aussie <laughs> or in uh, Kiwi. 
All right, how about the call for content interface themes? Yes and no. I mean, we already have a lot of themes in Blender. We could put them up and the call for content, it's, it's a good idea, but it has to be maintained, right? Like it's a, like adding something in Blender permanently means that you have to be um, committed to make it work and keep it around, like keep, keep working on it even after, because otherwise it will be abandoned, right? Like if, if it doesn't get updated, then other developers have to update it and they their time is better spent in other things, for example. Imagine if you had like a doctor, you know, like Sergey fixing themes. <laughs> um, it's a bit of a waste. So the less we have, the easier it is to maintain. And even then, it's about time we have online repository for themes, right? Someone make an add-on, please. <laughs> Wayward asks, the displacement on the material output works great, but the hair strands don't follow the displaced mesh on the material output. Ah, no, well, we know because it, it's the hair strands don't use the normal from the shader. They use the normal from the mesh. So I'm not sure. I think that it's better in that case to use the, um, to actually displace the mesh, to use a micro displacement. Hi Blender Burst, <laughs> hope you're doing well. I also hope you're doing well. Will Blender ever support VR so that we can do VR sculpting? Well, well, well. Um, I, I, I would say yes. I think there, I, it will because VR is proven to be a something that will here will be here to stay. It's not like the I don't know 3D that it was very exciting for a while and then it got left alone. <laughs> or to die, but it's still there, but it's just not as exciting. It is now more exciting now that we have VR. So if you do VR and 3D, then it's way better. So I think it will come. And I know there is already artists working and testing things like that. Um, the creator of Hero, the, um, the open movie project, it's working on, um, and I know he's investigating on it. He's not working on anything like that can show anything yet, but I know he's investigating it. So maybe, who knows, maybe there is a, there will be an open movie project then with the VR. Hopefully that will be amazing. That would be pretty neat. If you have a project that you like, you're crazy about and you have, you want to like develop stuff and you have the support from developers, like, like Daniel, Daniel, Daniel Pepeland did it that way. That's how he was granted um, support from the Blender Cloud to make it happen because he had the developers, he had the project and he has experience. So it would be cool if that will happen outside of uh, the Blender projects like Blender Institute projects. The first experiment with Hero was a great success. So you should propose stuff, you should show it off. If you if you have a, a friend that is a developer and you have a, a, a team of artists that would like to do this kind of stuff, Show it around. Peter Lustig says, Hey Pablo, thanks for... Oh, by the way, the, the short, if you make something like that, it has to be Creative Commons though. Share it with the world. Hey, is there an update function planned for Blender? Or maybe something like the Unity Hub, where you can manage your Blender versions and projects. <clears throat> I know Francesco City has uh, been playing with like a, an updater basically for the Mac, which is basically, yeah, just, just a little applet that stays there and then you can pull new versions. And um, I don't think it should be built inside of Blender because it can be a bit intrusive. Um, it shouldn't, maybe it could be as an add-on, but still, if it's, a, if it's an independent app that is cross-platform, then that, that should be better because then I think it's easier to maintain and not put it inside of the code of Blender. <clears throat> but yeah, it's tricky though, because Blender, like a new software update can break your files, right? So you don't always wanna download it and get rid of your previous files. So you have to keep track of them. And uh, what do you do? Like development stuff, official releases only, it's once every six months or so. So it's not like super often. But yeah, I agree, it will be awesome, but it will be even better if it would work with add-ons. That, that is like, add-ons are the more pain in the, in the butt to, to update. Blender itself is not so bad, but yeah. 
also like if you use Linux you can just update and if the blender was on the Windows Store which might be at some point I think um, that would also be another way or if you want to keep track of your blender versions and update it you should use um, you could use Steam if you already have it for games Steam has that and it works multi-platform everywhere all right let's uh, move on Krang Pity asks Will the sculpting tools be improved? More presets, importing ZBrush presets, etc. Well, the importing ZBrush, they th that that should be done by the ZBrush people, right? Like exporting to to Blender. That would be pretty awesome, and then an importer. But I don't know if they will be so friendly to do that kind of stuff. I I, I think so. Yeah. Why why wouldn't they? But otherwise, it yeah, I don't think it will be like an official development. It's not. Uh, doesn't sound so easy and then you have to use proprietary tools so I don't think so uh, about the sculpting tools being improved yes there is actually development going on with um, the um, with the multi-res modifier which I mention every week that will be <laughs> ready as soon as possible but you you can check it out actually it's in um, you, you have to compile blender and you have to enable a setting for it to work but basically, um, if we search by author and then we get Sergey, you will see that he's been working on it for like forever, like subdiv, subsurf, and then at some point it was called subdiv. Um, yeah, basically he's been working on it for so long and now he keeps working on it. So it's coming. It just takes a bit. Let's um, move on. Oh, about the preset system. There is a an effort to improve work, brush workflow in Blender. Basically, to, uh, to to make it a bit like not not only for sculpting or for painting, but for everything in Blender. Everything that uses brushes in Blender currently is unified. So you can have it's like some sort of like the same system or everything that it means to be brushes. So if we fix it once, it will fix it everywhere. So the idea is to have something like this, like this is one of the mockups by Willem and it's a fantastic way of visualizing your, um, your brushes because at the moment it's just not really good. Like if you're painting, you have um, the, okay, let's go to another mode here. Like this texture, it, like this is even pixelated. It's horrible. It's terrible, and it doesn't really show you much. And it's confusing because you can be in subtract, and then if you change the blend mode to like lighten, it's still called subtract, but it does something else now. So it's like super confusing, and um, it should be this should be fixed basically. So it, it should be. Um, it should follow or like the the preview system should change a bit more restrict restrictive maybe like if you change it you should change the name um, there has to be uh, decisions being made here and there is a proposal that you should check it out this link it's available it's on fabricator and if you should search for, by willem you could click on willem <laughs> And you will see all the, the tasks that he made and the tasks that he's around. So everywhere. He's very active in developer of Blender or he's making tasks for everything. Willem is part of the, if you don't know him, is part of the Blender interface team. Theme, team, team, not thing. <laughs> all right, Levi says, um, would it be possible to be a, a to be a 3D UV editing sculpting mode. You use graph, relax, brush tool, and in 3D space edit the UVs instead of looking for a part of a mesh in the texture. What? I don't follow. UV editing sculpting mode. Well, I mean, not in 3D, but you know that the sculpting tool exists in Blender already, um, but for for example if you are um, if you have a mesh like this you can sculpt by pressing s no by selecting 
UV, UV sculpt. You select this tool and then now you can um, basically graph and smooth and all of that. So this should be an active tool, by the way. It's being, it's gonna be worked on, but yes. That is the only way for a time being. But yeah, maybe in 3D should could, could work. That would be nice. All right, next question. Um, if I didn't understand, please ask again, <laughs> sorry. Is it supposed that recurring, that recurring pressing of the shortcut should cycle through one type of brush? Grab, thumb, bob, inflate. If so, it doesn't work, does it? And uh, no, it doesn't work, but you can make it, I think the toggle, you can make it work, but it will go back to the previous tool that you have selected. Um, it doesn't work right now at the moment, I think. If you have, for example, Shift C for crease, and if you do it again, yeah, it works. But then it doesn't go back. Huh. So if you do Shift, if you're somewhere else, Shift C and then Shift C again, and then Control Shift C or not, Control Alt, Alt C. No, I'm, I'm making a mess here. Huh. It should go back though, right? It should like switch between them. Yes. Or maybe it does, but it doesn't update. No. Huh. You found the bug. Awesome. But I think, let's see if we can fix it in me. It's super fast. Super furious here. Control and, no, uh, Shift C. Brush select. If I sculpt crease. If I click the toggle box uh, option and I'm here and then I shift C and then now I don't need this at once. Shift C. Yeah, I can enable the toggle basically, which is goes back to the previous tool, which for example, yeah, no, it's now it's cycling between them and it's not even cycling among all of them. Like flatten, con like I put smooth with S. Once again, scrape, once again, it stops. Yeah, that's definitely a bug. Let's wait for the beta to report all of these things, but you should do it, yeah. Thank you for reporting, by the way. And Francesco says, hi, Paolo, this is the first time. Ah, again, ciao from Italy. <laughs> What's up with MantaFlow? Everything is up with MantaFlow. The developer is working on implement on porting it to Blender 2.8. So that's great news because it means that it's pretty much ready from 2.79 and it's just a matter of porting it to 2.8. If you want to see the status of it, which is basically just ready, <laughs> but for 2.7, you can go to graphical.org. And here you will find the latest and greatest builds. Well, this one is like from a month ago, but still it's pretty much final. He has 10,000 downloads. Insane. All right. Um, the job company says, Let's say I was live streaming on my Blender window and wanted to add a sensor blur thing over everything. I opened the file browser. Is there an easy way to do that? What? Sensor blur. What? Live streaming my Blender window. Ah, you want to live stream, but you don't want to show your file browser. There is an easy way to do that. Uh, no, I don't think so. You can open the browser somewhere else off screen or you can edit the video afterwards. You can add blur on YouTube after, but this is not really Blender related. But yeah, you can add blur afterwards. Burbank says, how much more work is going into the crisp pencil workflow? And where's the best place to contribute ideas about it? The best place is right click select. It is a community for reporting ideas, basically for, for discussing ideas. So once these ideas are like well thought out and you, you talk with people, <laughs> So nice. Um, you you discuss it with other users because maybe there are things you are missing or the things that could be improved. These um, could be migrated to the other uh, website for feedback about the code quest. It's a the developer forum, and I haven't been here in a while. I hope everything is okay. You see my notifications. There's like. I've been so busy with the cloud. It's insane. This weekend I was like working on it here. This is my user. Like if you see, if, if you go to Fabricator, you can see my user is like all the commits in the world, like super crazy. 
like 6.30 a.m. 6, 6.40 a.m., 5 a.m., 4 a.m., Jesus, insane. Get a life, Pablo, get a life. All right. Um, <laughs> let's move on. Sino says, what's the news about the UI copyright directive? You guys have any comments or future plans? Um, no, I, uh, I don't, I haven't, well, everything we do is Creative Commons, right? So it should be fine in the copyright laws, right? People should just give credit. So I think nothing changes for us, I believe. Basically this, if you're not familiar, there is this European Union um, thingy, law that is gonna, is supposed to be passed the beginning of the next year, I think. It's about uh, copyright, so everything that has copyright should is, is protected, basically. Even things that are not copyrighted, but by default everything is copyrighted. But the thing we do, it's uh, credit common, so it should be fine. Would it be possible for Blender to introduce a new type of texture that is generated like noise texture, but can be assigned a node tree to create the colors? Everything knows. Or even better, scripting. You know, writing in OSL, maybe. Open shading language. Miller says, hey, will it be possible to disable flashing icons at the bottom but retain active tool info? Also, playback on spacebar, at idea. F6 for playback? No. That is, no. <laughs> F6 is not the best uh, solution. For playback, I think it should be either spacebar or like right right now it's a bit annoying shift space, but it's um, it's better. F6 is not very nice because many computers, PC and Mac especially, have the F keys inverted, so it shouldn't be shouldn't be there. Um, spacebar on every animation, um, like if you're video editing or if you uh, have a video player, space are always plays back, so it should be at least somewhere around that line. Um, about the, the, the disabling the flashing icons, no, it's not, uh, no way to disable it right now. I think you can disable the alpha of the icons, but it's not like the best way of fixing it. And it doesn't even work. <laughs> it makes this brighter okay that's a, i found a bug thanks to you basically if you make the alpha icons zero it hides everything else but it makes these ones stronger interesting nice bug next when will the multi-res work in sculpt it's already working actually i was uh, that's something i was checking here when i was reading the the commits uh, if i sort them by date and i search for sergey here at the bottom there was a few commits from today about um, about that, about basically making the here initial work to get sculpting to work with open subdiv. So basically, allows to go to sculpt mode, brush strokes, and then get out of sculpt mode. Like coding is insane. Like I I remember last week talking with the. Uh, Sergey about this and he's like, yeah, I got it working. Like I got sculpting working, but after I finish, it doesn't save the changes to, to the mesh. And you will think like, how, how can it not? I mean, you already sculpted. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> there is a lot more going on under the hood that after you've performed the strokes, then it will, it has to distribute it. You have to pass it along to the rest of Blender to do whatever you want, to particle, to anything. So. That's also why um, the it's like a different kind of mesh that you handle when you're like using uh, multi-res or like what you're using when you're um, sculpting or when you're, uh, for example, um, dynamic topology is also. It's so much going on under the hood. We know so little. <laughs> Hey, thank you. Look great. I, I thought I was uh, I was looking wasted because I, as I sh was showing the commits, I've been going to bed this weekend both days around 6:30, 7 a.m. And yesterday I couldn't because today I went to work. So at, at 10. So yeah. Next, Miller says in part two. 
because you search some function functions and it remembers if you have an instant shortcut or spacebar for that. I don't understand. Maybe it's from the other question. I can't follow. Sorry. Jersey asks, what are benefits of making an open movie? Should I do open movies? Yes, you should make open movies. What is the benefit? Well, if you're making a, move, a film, uh, if you're the creator of the film, making open movies is good because it gives you basically free advertisement because people find it and it's like, hey, I can use this movie to show my video player and it's that's what happened for example like elementary os they are using caminandes in the front page and i've never got in touch with them or they got in touch with me is because caminandes is great commons they used it for this and i it's so nice every time i like i'm looking for video players or whatever like for the web or javascript scripts and stuff and I find like Sintel or Bebug Bunny or anything is so nice. So that is, uh, yes. One, if you're a creator, Open Movie Process give you free PR. And people on festivals that wants to fill in their <laughs> uh, program, they also look for open source, open content, open movies, creative commons. So another free PR. And it makes everybody better because you're sharing your sources. You get it out there. It's not that you're gonna become a millionaire anyway with this little short two movie, two two minute short movie that you made. So it's it is good, right? It it puts everything out there. There is, I think it's a, the best thing. Otherwise, it's um it's yet another movie, right? So if people can learn from the things that you did, from all the time that you spent making that sh that film, isn't that a way better? It doesn't it make the whole film a lot better? And what did you lose? nothing because you put things out there it's credit common so they have to give you credit you can take it down if they don't if they don't uh, provide credit and yeah it just makes the world a better place and you make it with open source software blender so what's better than that all right let's move on <laughs> you're becoming a youtube superstar no i come on it's not even seven thousand people here like the, the 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 superstars get like hundreds and thousands it's just too nerd I, if i would make tutorials about how to make simple stuff then probably it would get way more but i like ra i rather have this thing you know like just hanging out and chatting and nerding out about the latest stuff in blender stuff also these videos are very long so only they even hard more hardcore nerds are watching it so thank you for staying <laughs> strong all right marcus Polio asks, hey, how are you? I'm great. Uh, how are you? Is What happened between Joshua and Sergey Sirius? Can the community help in what? 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 No, nothing happened between them. And he's not serious. It's okay. Speaking of Joshua, he worked on something for motion pads not long ago, which got improved way more by brecht recently on friday and i don't have anything to show oh i could oh i didn't bring it from let's see if it's on the cloud if the guys uploaded it probably not um i was really wanted to show it because it makes motion pads real time which yeah it sounds great like it sounds yeah of course we're in the real time yeah not really if you have a big rig like blend rig the characters of spring open movie project are using a blend rig which has like 3000 bones so every time you change something like like you use motion pads to keep track of where your bones are going and to maybe edit it, edit them it's um yeah it's it's just slow so it's basically i mean i'm not gonna show it here but basically i wanted to so basically if you have a a keyframe here and then you go a few frames more here and then you'll go through frames more here when you calculate the path of this um this thing it allows you to move it and then recalculate like um the the path again so basically we'll see it in real time when you're moving it around but i don't have it here enabled the update path 
Hey. Anyway, I... No. Anyway, I'm not even gonna try it here. But basically it's real time. I have a video. Uh, I'll, I'll, I should have brought a video from the Institute there. We care the people behind Blender too. <laughs> Audio non sync, sorry. But I hope it's not too bad. Is there a way to automatically add the name of a scene camera object to the name of the save render? No, I've been asking for that for ages. And it, yeah. The main issue was basically how much do you give, how much control do you give? Like you allow to, for people to do everything or just the scene name or which exactly do you want to um, to like to let people use in that name basically but there could be add-ons for that that should be simpler to do all right um pyramides asks we will have when will we have the chance in the future to have a 3d code substance painter layer material system in blender i i don't know but that's something that a lot of people want and, and it's just a matter of time basically now there are way too many other projects going on in blender like too deep for developers to even think of this kind of stuff so we need new developers right just join anybody out there is 3d code still a thing mari is mari still a thing is it like mari or did they kill it no it's probably still a thing still a thing yes Oh yeah, it's still a thing, a big thing. All right, <laughs> next. I was just kidding because if it was killed, then developers, you should come join the Dark Force. Come to Amsterdam. All right, next. Uh, do you have any idea when the API will be updated? I'm pushing hard so we might have Blender only AAA game production right now. It is looking pretty good. Well, 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 the API has been, been updating um, getting updates during the last <clears throat> couple, well, months, but especially on the last couple of weeks. It's getting more more ready, more close to ready. So the idea was to have by October, like a um, update on like where the API is. So people have a feed of time to update their add-ons. So when is the beta, the add-ons that ship officially with Blender are um, updated so I think right now I th the biggest things were done I, I should confirm with the developers but if you're a developer and have a free time and in case the API changes again and again you are around to like um, keep it up to date and updated then you should, should give it a try there are already many things that changed so you can already start updating some parts of your uh, add-ons What are some limitations we can expect with the everything nodes? Uh, hopefully none. <laughs> hopefully none. Especially because of the new dependency graph. Uh, thank you, Gaetano, for the, <laughs> the audio snort of things. Cool. Um, hey, are there any news in the asset manager? No, unfortunately not. Sad, sad. Sad Blender is sad. But it's just developer, the, develop, the main developer of, of the asset manager is fixing bugs at the moment so it's gonna yeah it's either like you you fix what we have now or we introduce new things that's very unfortunate I, I will I love the concept of an asset manager but if it's not now it's gonna be 281 and the developers will be more uh, way more free to, to work on that so yeah extragon asks can you add a left click or right click select option to the blender splash screen yeah that's the idea that was what I shown Yadran Gilot Mora, Pablo, ven para Cuba. Organize a Blender conference Cuba and I will go. If I get invited. <laughs> if I'm invited and maybe well, we can sort something out. Maybe. That would be amazing. I don't, I've never been to Cuba. Only to the airport of uh, Havana, but it doesn't count. I uh, would love to go to Cuba. Are there going to be bone collections instead of bone layers? Yes, eventually. But it's not, not a huge priority right now um hola pablo could you give us a time frame for eevee to be able to make use of animated textures um no i'm not sorry i, I will i have to ask the developers but uh, because this question comes every week 
but uh, no, I can't. I don't know a date. Sorry, Arturo. Correction, not Python, but Python. Uh, Python, yes, which is a C Python. Still not as bad, not as good as uh, built-in Blender. So, um, will ha Eevee have an option to activate real-time ray tracing from RTX or Radeon rays? Eventually, I think, I think. Uh, Blender is good friends with NVIDIA, so who knows? Burbanks asks, is anyone working on an edit mode, edit node that stores a layer of mesh changes that can be applied to multiple meshes? Uh, no. Not that I know, at least. But everything notes? <laughs> All right, it's 10 p.m. I will answer five more questions and we'll call it a day. GJSV says, also it's a shortcut to select and deselect. It's A to select and Alt A to deselect. You have many objects, A to select everything, Alt A to deselect. That is what people should teach. For power users, you can do A to select and AA twice, like hit A twice to deselect basically but that's more like a power user like if you if you look at it and in the menu it will be alt a select none alt a so it's very um consistent with the rest with the rest of the functions that use alt as well okay four questions uh, i think there is a problem in the ui <laughs> i think there are many problems in the ui but in the object display options x-ray means the draw object above everything no it should be changed now. When you select multiple objects and you select one in the the viewport display, it should be called in front. There you go. The object, the the, the setting is called in front now. It's a different setting. Uh, in the workbench X-ray, Julio Campagnolo, maybe you are not uh, up to date with the latest news, but there has been some renaming going on in Blender. So many of the tools have been renamed. By the way, huge. Huge news. <laughs> Grab is now called move, basically. So yeah, you move with the G key, which is kind of weird, but you also do proportional editing with the O, which has nothing to do with the with the shortcut. Or you select with A, A, so you don't do election selection. <laughs> so yeah, G is still the same shortcut, but now it's called move instead of um, grab like it used to be. Huge change, by the way. 2.8 is just out of this world. There will be a lot of documentation outdated, but it will be outdated anyway because everything changed. So it's good that um, everything is done at once, at least, right? Uh, three more questions. Sergey, hi, Paolo. Is there any way to manipulate animation curves on a local mode and not global? A uh, local mode. What is the local mode? The local. Well, you should be able. I mean, you can change the curves of the selected objects. So when you are in here, you can, um, yeah, you do the, sel the selected objects. But also, I think slash didn't work. No, it should be fine. Um, anyway, it should. No, if it's view. Local view, no, no. Didn't understand completely, so I'm sorry. Uh, next, is it true that Blender 2.8 will be released on October 20? No, it's not true. Blender 2.8 will be released in 2019, next year. Yes, it's sad, but true, next year. What will come in, uh, in October is the beta release. Beta means full of bugs don't use in real life stuff yeah maybe use it but don't save make backups always make backups by the end of the year we should have or the beginning of next year there should be some release candidate builds but that's it or maybe a beta 2 that would be a good good uh good thing to to keep it updated and give it another round of updates but there will be no blender 2.8 in 2018 this year I wanted to say 2008, but no, 2.8. Two more questions. Will it be possible to put the navigation widget on the left side of the screen for left-handed? It, it could be, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea, actually. 
put it on Blender um, on right click select, right click select.com. Or maybe there is already. Left handed. No. Just put it on right click select. Um, see, because it's a good idea. And it shouldn't be a lot of work. It's just putting it on the other side. Which other options would you like to have follow that setting though? Next. Um, do you know about the Auto Rig Pro add-on from the Blender Market? <laughs> no. I, I don't have a Blender Market account, I think. Um, but no. Next. Monsieur Concoin says, <laughs> will there be an option to render wireframe? And will subserve optimal display in Eevee or OpenGL? Not that I know for the time being. There is a wireframe node, but it renders triangles too, so it's not the optimal display one. Request, please fix Blender Shift key and Huion pen display. Send me a, a Huion pen display and I will, I, will, I will fix it myself. No, kidding. I'm not gonna um, enter this uh, URL, but I, yeah, it, it's a fix and is if it's hardware specific it's very difficult for developers to have that to 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 see what can we can go wrong because there can be many many like the operating system the drivers the so many different layers all right last question can you talk a bit about bam what is it used for and is it the recommended tool for new users bam is no longer used <laughs> It's a, well, it's a tool for packing blend files. So basically the same as going to file um, external data and pack, but it will pack everything in a zip file. You can do, you can install it with pip, um, pip install, pip install bam or blender dash bam, I think. Yeah, blender dash bam. It's, um, I need to do it with Python too. But yeah, it's uh, it, it basically packs, it makes a zip file with all your, uh, like you, you give it a blend file and it makes a zip file with everything in it. Super cool. All right, I will stop here because I have to go. I have another, you know, another live stream to do in one hour in Spanish. And uh, there's a friend of mine here, which is listening to everything that I say, which is totally weird because it's not even Blender related stuff. So he's like, what is this nerd thing that you do with like, uh, speaking in a room to a camera and like 600 people but yes it's weird i'm all by myself <laughs> awkwardness aside i will see you again next week when we have more news about what the people are doing i will make a video on the developers channel just to to maybe talk with the um jack's look about what's what's gonna do or like let me know what what you want to see this week, hopefully, the Blender Cloud will be out. The new Blender Cloud will be out. Hopefully, tomorrow, Tuesday, maybe after lunch or in the afternoon, we're going to uh, deploy it. And that will give me a lot of more rest because I've been super tired with working on this. After this, I'm going to work on the development fund. So I'm not going to be full time on Blender again, but at least I will be more uh, following what, what's going on and I want to keep making videos for the developers channel because today actually someone showed up at the Blender Animation Studio, came up and uh, he's like, hey Pablo, I saw you, I see your videos on developers YouTube channel. You haven't done it in a while, but I follow them and he was like, yeah, sorry, I'm sorry. And uh, But he was super nice and um, yeah, I will continue making videos there because there are so many things going on and I want to, to keep doing it, even short ones. It's not as long as this one. Again, I will see you again in the next week. I will, if you're wearing headphones, watch out because I'm gonna blow your head, your ears with the epic nest in five, four. All right. That was a good one. Okay, I will see you again, same time next week. Ciao.